introduce you to our new Phoenix light duty commercial water heater line. Uh, these new tanks will come in three sizes. Uh, there'll be a 45 gallon tank, which I have here, a 60 gallon and an 80 gallon. The firing rate on these units will be 76,000 BTUs. Uh, they'll modulate, it'll be a three to one turn down, so they'll modulate like all of our Phoenix water heaters do. Um, and they'll also uh, vent in two inch uh, PVC venting. Um, there's a lot of special features to this product. So uh, let's take a closer look and I'll go over all the aspects of the design and give you a closer look to those, those features that make up the new Phoenix light duty commercial water heater. One of the things with the new uh, commercial light duty Phoenix water heaters that you'll see right off the bat is its attractive look. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to do is we wanted to uh, have a jacket which emulates what the tank is constructed of. Uh, the tank is 316L stainless steel high quality construction so we wanted to have a nice brushed finished look of stainless steel so we employed a uh, metal jacket for our outer casement we have our new heads that have a nice rounded edge you can see the keypad we have our keypad an attractive round cabinet look to it um, and uh, the, the, the keypad has all the features you would need uh, to regulate your temperature, we have eco mode, we have a number of different features to this keypad and the way it operates. And uh, the unit has all the ports out of the top. Um, they're eight inches on center, which is standard for the water heater business. And we even in included a, a special auxiliary uh, port for a recirc line. So not only is the unit really attractive, but there's additional features uh, that we've employed to the design. Um, with the new Phoenix Light Duty Commercial water heater. You notice on the Phoenix Light Duty Commercial that all the tappings are out of the top of the unit, a little bit different than what we have with the, our standard Phoenix line. Um, the tappings are three quarter inch, the center lines between the supply and return are eight inches, and we've added an additional auxiliary port, and the auxiliary port can be used in a couple different fashions. Uh, the auxiliary port could be used for a recirculation line in a house or a commercial establishment to provide instant hot water um, and or we, you can use this for an air handler return connection and then provide a T here off of the run of the T you go to your domestic uh, connections and off of the branch you go to your air handler. Um, the auxiliary port has a dip tube and the dip tube uh, goes down about six to eight inches and all it's doing is recirculation recirculating the top portion of the water heater and that increases the overall efficiency of the water heater because when we start to consume energy as that recirc pump uh, is running um, we don't want to basically bring the recirculation line in the bottom of the unit which creates a higher mean temperature in the whole tank so in other words, from top to bottom, the tank is hot. And where on the top portion, if we're just recirculating, we're isolating that just to the top portion of the tank, which makes the heat exchanger more effective when it's running and provides uh, condensation uh, when we uh, run uh, to bring the tank back up to its normal operating temperature. Um, we also have a T&P port here. This T&P port uh, can be, uh, we supply a plastic, uh, discharge tube uh, which uh, allows for ease of plumbing uh, down to a discharge a drain or uh, into a uh, water heater pan um, and it allows for ease of plumbing so all of our top connects all of the Phoenix plus light duty units come with top connects and uh, our three-quarter inch uh, the Phoenix also comes with a full port a drain valve so you can drain the entire contents of the tank. It comes already pre-plumbed and ready to go. The unit comes with uh, PVC venting. You can see here that we have a two inch connection. Uh, this is your intake. And then as we pan down, you'll see your exhaust. Your exhaust always comes with a little bit of a pitch to it because we need to provide that pitch. Uh, we require a quarter inch per foot back slope to the unit to trap the condensate. Um, but the unit, both the top and the bottom, come in uh, PVC. Uh, you can bend them in PVC Schedule 40 pipe um, up to 150 feet combined, which is a long way for uh, two-inch uh, two-inch pipe. 
for a 76,000 BTU unit. So it'll give you a lot of ease of flexibility to uh, install it in, in areas where you've got to run uh, your vent a long distance. Um, the unit comes with a block vent pressure switch. You can see this line here, which gets connected up to your exhaust vent. What we're doing is we're monitoring the pressure in the vent, so if there's a blockage, the pressure switch will sense the pressure and basically uh, lock out the unit. Uh, the unit will do so many tries um, and then it'll fault out and then it'll retry in another hour just to see if the blockage has corrected itself. So that's one safety we have with the uh, Phoenix design. Uh, another safety that we have is we have our flu safety limit. This is an electronic safety. Um, it's just a clip-on low voltage. This can screw in and out. Um, and what this does is it's monitoring, it's uh, constructed a stainless steel and a uh, composite uh, plastic for uh, the monitoring the temperature in the exhaust and if the temperature gets above a certain point uh, temperature the unit will lock out um, just to provide safety for the plastic venting. Um, so this safety is incorporated right into the exhaust and sealed uh, with an o-ring seal cap here we have our safety limit, our water safety limit, uh, high limit, and our operating limit, NTC. It's a four pin connector with two sensors potted in a stainless steel enclosure. And uh, what that does is sets the tank temperature and modulate the burner accordingly. And it also provides a safety for uh, its high limit setting of 194 degrees. Uh, condensate line, this is half inch, it's sweat for PVC. Uh, piping, hard piping is always recommended. Um, you'll notice that on the unit there is another hole on the other side of the cabinet so this is actually designed so the condensate discharge can be plumbed either when you're looking at the front it can either be plumbed on the right or the left of the unit. Um, so that's a nice feature to have sometimes where your drains are not situated where you want, you want that flexibility but uh, the units can be uh, changed in the field if needed and you'll see uh, the uh, hole opening and you just basically uh, change the connection from one side to the other and I'll show you how that's done inside. You'll notice that you have two connection ports as I was talking about earlier. So on the cabinet you have a connection port here and you have a connection port right underneath this pipe. So that gives you the ability to take these connections here and shift them over to this side and then move the plug on this side in order to move your condensate from one side of the cabinet which is here to this side of the cabinet. It's that easy. The nice thing about your system is you've got this uh, cartridge down here. This cartridge has line crystals built in which neutralizes the condensate. Uh, to, to replace it um, all you do is you pull this plastic hose off I'm pulling it off here and then all you do is you reach down, you slide it out, and the cartridge simply comes out in your hand. And you can see the way it, it's built. Uh, this is a patented device that we've designed. Right here you can see this is our discharge which connects up to another barb uh, where your discharge line goes. But you can alter it. You could simply change it from this side to this side. And then we have our connection point here which there's a, a, a little discharge line on this condensate uh, unit and the condensate flows in here, it flows down, gets trapped and then it comes up, there's a secondary chamber where the condensate then flows up and gets discharged. But there is little lime uh, crystals in here which neutralizes the pH of the condensate so when it's discharged it's neutralized automatically. And we recommend that you check these in your, your annual service, but most likely you're looking at uh, anywhere within a five-year period that you would have to change this. This is purchased separately. You just buy a new one and you discard the old one uh, and reinstall it and you're ready to go. Here's our combustion system. Uh, we have our combustion fan, our venturi, our gas valve, and our air inlet pipe coming into the uh, venturi. On the fan, we have our pulse width connection here, which uh, allows us to vary the speed of the fan to give you a three to one turn down to vary the input depending on what set point you have and the rate of change inside the heater. And then we have our power connection here, which provides power to the unit 
um, and powers the DC, uh, powers the fan in order to drive the fan electrically. Um, we have our gas valve and our gas valve connection here, which is 24 volt. Um, we have our offset and we have our throttle screw uh, adjustment. Um, these adjustments can regulate the amount of fuel going into the combustion chamber. Um, and then the nice thing about this valve is it has a quick connect uh, clip that's for if you ever need to replace it, you just pop this clip, uh, clip off. You have a union connection here, you just disconnect your union, pop the valve on, put it back on, put your clip on, and that's it, you're done. And there's an O-ring inside of there. Um, we have our Venturi in our air. So the way this operates is when there's a single four heat and the fan runs, the fan will come on for a brief period of time. Um, and what will happen is we'll have the spark ignition system, which is back there. Your spark will energize. Um, the gas valve will open and we'll mix the air and gas inside the fan and ignite the, uh, ignite the gas and then uh, modulate the burner as, uh, according to how far and how fast we're getting to set point. This uh, spark ignition system in the back here also uh, provides rectification for flame. Uh, so it does two functions, it sparks and creates uh, and provides uh, rectification for flame. So that's our combustion system. It's a highly efficient, uh, gives you that three to one turndown and uh, low NOx operation, even uh, complies to the most stringent standards in the US. Uh, so uh, it's a great combustion system and you'll see that it's easy, easy to work on. The Phoenix uh, LCD display, you can see right here, uh, gives you the ability to monitor the operation of the system. Uh, it'll illuminate, show you temperature, it'll show you uh, the flame um, in different levels as far as uh, whether it's running at high fire, low fire, where it's at in its modulation sequence by the uh, length of the flame. Um, so the display will, will do that, show you operation, show you set point. It'll also show you fault codes. If there's a fault, it'll illuminate, tell you what that fault code is for troubleshooting. Um, you notice we have these uh, push buttons here. We have a, a minus and a plus. The minus and a plus are used for uh, mainly programming uh, to change, uh, you know, differential, to change outdoor reset curves. Uh, the Phoenix, uh, the Phoenix Light Duty comes with a uh, built-in uh, reset curve. So if you're doing an air handler job and you want to uh, hook up an outdoor sensor, you can change the temperature automatically depending on outdoors. Um, these watermarks here, we've got a minus watermark and a plus watermark that can simply change your set point of the unit, uh, your, wa your water temperature uh, that you require. And then we have our eco mode, which is a nice little feature here. So if you want to run the heater uh, and you want to save some energy, um, you press the eco mode and what will happen is uh, the recovery will take longer for the unit to recover to set point, um, but it'll run more efficiently. And this uh, eco button can be used if you have a, a larger unit um, where you have a bunch of people in the family, uh, three or four kids, uh, they go away uh, and you want to operate the heater, it's just you and your wife and uh, you want to operate the heater in a more uh, efficient uh, manner. Uh, by pressing that eco mode you'll see it on the display, it'll, it'll show you and uh, it'll operate in that fashion um, until you press it again and then reset it. Um, this reset here will uh, reset a fault. Um, it'll also uh, uh, reset after you do your programming function to memorize your new program in the, in the uh, controller. And then we have our little push button here which uh, provides uh, power to the unit, either shuts the display off or turns it on.